Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we are going to discuss on the classification and different connections uh, in order to find out the traditional roots for Indian folk and minor art in our second module. What we are going to cover in this particular module are um, basically to understand what are the available literary sources uh, that can help us out with this, though the resources are very limited. Uh, there are very few texts which are written uh, on this topic, uh, but still if we take an overview, we see that there are uh, certain very substantial work that has uh, continued and they are mostly preserved in different museums and archives. Uh, now it is another question that how they can be accessed and uh, there are multiple routes to get that. But I will try to incorporate as many texts as possible and uh, expose you with the different sources from where you can also independently go and find out uh, uh, the study material. Uh, however, we are also trying to understand another very important issue that how the myths and facts got connected for this particular train and uh, that can also be very fascinating to understand and get exposed about. Uh, and then again the most important uh, areas that we discussed, we are going to link that with that, the idea of nationalism in the context of folk and minor art of India and the idea of modernism as well. And then with that we are going to re-realize the relevance of the art practice in the contemporary context. When we said that many of the resources are connected to uh, myths and facts and they are so well blended together that it is also sometimes uh, gets into a certain difficulty to separate the two and that makes it slightly difficult to authenticize. But uh, this is also true that there are these three uh, constitutions that worked as operational factor for this whole practice for such a very long time. And uh, as we can realize that it underwent uh, the bare minimum patronage from uh, anybody, like they, they did not have any patronage from the royal court, uh, they just grew and uh, moved as folk art grows. Uh, but still like if we think about the constitutions that operates art in general, there are the three factors. One is perhaps the temple, uh, the other one is of course trade and then court. Now this is very fascinating to understand that for the Indian folk and tribal art, trade and court, these two factors are not basically coming into any picture because of the fact that they were not the uh, art that takes place in the uh, royal court or they were also not made for the trading purpose. They did not have a market of their own. They just uh, got connected to the temple tradition. So many of the religious, the religious stories are connected to the temple connection and the secondary uh, secular things were also to generate moral stories. So these are the connection that we can figure out. From there we would like to understand and uh, this is like part of the course where we are trying to figure out how they are categorized and how they can be categorized just because they are too scattered we need to focus on certain area and hence go deeper into that particular part. So let us first understand how we can put these practices into certain category. 
we are not including the entire practice, but we are using some regional practices as our examples and we will carry it further uh, with those examples and the available sources and uh, the data that uh, we could collect uh, in this whole course of time. To understand folk and minor art, it is very important to understand folk culture. that has many different classifications. It is the folk literature, folk song, folk theatre, folk dance, performances, and folk art. We are picking up art as our focal area. Folk art has two major categories. One is the oral tradition with the visual tradition and the other one is visual tradition without the oral tradition. Visual tradition can be categorized into two different areas. We have the considerations of material then the medium medium involves painting. curving weaving or other decorations and the material needed for it are metal baked clay or unbaked clay, wood, stone, cotton, silk, cane, bamboo, paper, a paper pulp. From the medium, we should also pick up painting as our focal area of interest. Paintings can be classified into three different categories. The single frame and narrative scroll ephemeral art. and painted sculptures. Our discussion will primarily focus 
on the single frame and narrative scroll paintings through the examples of the single frame and narrative scroll paintings we will try to track the history and the culture which is phenomenally important in the context of contemporary art of India. Theme based paintings can be further classified into two categories dealing either with the religious themes or with the secular subject matters and the shape based classifications uh, separates the narrative scrolls that is known as Jorano Potter or the Deeghal Potter. Jorano Potter means the folded Potter Chitra or the Potter is canvas and the Deeghal Potter means long Potter, long canvases. From single frame painting which is known as Ekachitra uh, that are uh, the single frames and the frames can have different shapes like there are rectangular shapes, square, triangle uh, and also there are circular shapes which is very popular. In fact, there is a very well known tradition uh, of Dashavatar card for the playing cards and they made the avatars. the 10 incarnations of Vishnu in those cards and that was uh, more like an indoor game that was there in our culture and the images that are painted on those circular cards are uh, amazingly interesting but it is there in a uh, personal collection with some uh, like uh, you know very few people they have collected all those things so they are just preserved there and we get to see two or three such examples in some uh, museums also. But the shapes are very important to tell you a story for example when we talk about uh, the Ekachitra or the single frame the images are more symmetrical there and it is theme based which are the themes are often very iconic and straightforward. Whereas, it when it becomes horizontally or vertically long and it has a, a symmetrical spread, we feel that the compositions are also becoming more asymmetrical and hence more dynamic. It does not have much symmetry and static quality, they are not uh, iconic rather dynamic. It involves a lot of connective stories and it gives a continuity and it tells a story. So, the Ekachitra or the single frame paintings are depiction of different images and those are more like a story a part of it whereas, the uh, Patachitras which are like the Deeghal Pata or the Jarana, Jarano Pata, uh, they have a very different connotation. They tells us story uh, that is continuous and uh, long. So, narrative scrolls are either horizontal the horizontal scrolls are known as Ari Latai Pata in Bengal, the verticals The verticals are known as Latai Pata, the horizontal scrolls are usually divided into 7 rectangular chambers. They are mostly 400 centimeter in length and 15 to 20 centimeter in width. Vertical scrolls with 25 to 30 rectangular chambers are around 
150 to 700 centimeter in length and 25 to 30 centimeter in width. The very tradition of scroll painting with narrative continuity in the depiction can be compared with the narrative scroll of Tibet, Nepal, China and Japan. Narrative Dighala Pata or Jorano Pata is often embedded with songs sung by the painters. The themes are generally centered on gods and goddesses. Ekachitra has two categories. They are the tribal paintings in Bengal the examples are Santhal Butter. and urban folk painting of Kalighat Pata Urban folk art includes subjects from daily life activities, flora and fauna, static pictures, mythological portraiture, social and historical theme based pictures, humorous and sarcastic comedy and caricatures. The Galapata Chitra is perceived as a combination of some miniature paintings having a narrative continuity in their prevailing visual style. Individual frames of the scroll are slightly larger in their scale than the miniature painting. Due to the purpose of public display and visibility during the performance, it has to be made slightly larger. So, there are evidences of similar scroll paintings in, in the Shiva and Vishnu temples of Odisha and Assam also. They also resemble Tanka painting that are preserved in the Buddhist monasteries and caves of Nepal and Tibet. Both Ekachitra and Dighalapata Chitra are derivatives of traditional miniature tradition, Patachitra of Bengal, Odisha, Mithila painting from Bihar, Rajasthan, Pabhuji ka Pad, Jain miniature of Gujarat, Warangal and Lingoda of Andhra Pradesh, Tanjore painting from Tamil Nadu can all be categorized in this two shape based formats. Then there are Gajir Pata. painted along with the doctrines of the local Islamic saints. Jishu Pata on the stories and images of Jesus Christ.
Patichitra based on Hindu mythological stories like Ramayana, Mahabharata, Chaitanya, Krishna Leela, Santhali, Tribal Pata, Yama Pata, depicting life after death, Panchakalyani Pata and Chakshudan Pata are the other classifications. By 18th century, the local rulers, the basic state rulers and also some merchants and other rich people, uh, they took interest in this kind of uh, traditions and uh, they were all familiar with these things. Uh, moreover, it got more popularized and it found some bit of a market where Tamluk or Tamralipta, that was the um, the ancient Tamralipta, which is the southwest of Midnapur district in Bengal, uh, that became the state capital, and because of that, the uh, you know the trade uh, flourished, and from there uh, the entire tradition it spread it to the adjoining districts uh, like Bakura, Murshidabad, and Birbhum, and they're still on, and there are other traditions also which were found in Hooghly and uh, the other districts, uh, but they are uh, still not that much into the vogue. Uh, but this is perhaps one reason that uh, Tomluk or the ancient Tamralipta, when it became the cultural capital connecting Odisha and Bengal, Patachitra tradition of Jaranupata and Chokapata or the Squarish Patachitra vastly flourished from that particular centre. Scroll painting tradition is most suggest suggestive, having a combination of narration, form and content, narrator being a painter and a singer at the same time. It is a synchronization of story, poetic rhythm, painted visual and oration. So, except for the painters from Purulia district, all other painters of West Bengal that I mentioned they maintained a particular status of being neither Hindu or Muslim. They are divided into quite a few groups, which are the Duwari Pato, Pulkata Pato, Lampakata Pato. Potu, and Sanbadha Pata. Which are known as the indifferent options. They are the Chitrakar Patua who practiced them, then we had the Mal Patua, we had Bede Patua. and the Mashkata Patuas.
So, all these Patachitras never had any spatial depth uh, in the European or uh, if we think in terms of the Renaissance uh, perspective uh, from the Renaissance aesthetic point of view that uh, there is no special depth that was shown uh, with the help of one point to two point perspective. It was mostly overlapping uh, that two overlapping was very rare, but by using the vertical location that the images are of the same scale, but the images which are in the lower part of the painting and uh, the upper part of the painting that gives you a sense of uh, vertical location that those who which are put slightly upper they seems to be going deeper into the frame, but more or less they maintain the two dimensional quality into it. Uh, so, it is more like it was divided into three four different backgrounds those were layered it was more like uh, making a background to show the context where the figures are standing in and showing a middle ground to show the depth of space to the bare minimum and showing a foreground and having some focal interests by using different scales and uh, the space divisions. Uh, but that was perhaps the uh, intention from the artist to make it as simple as possible, because there had been a purpose that was connected to it and we are coming to that in our following lectures.